All right, everybody, today we're going to unbox the Wingsland M5. It's a real beauty. This is something I was most likely never going to buy, but I did, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Here's a little label on the side of the box that tells you the size of the battery. It's an 1850 milliamp hour. Tells you the model number and gives you your QR codes for the app. That's all on the side of the box. Opening up the box gives you your little jigsaw, which is the M5, because that's what it looks like, a Black & Decker jigsaw. <laughs> that's what I thought of when I first seen it. And that's right there. And here are your four brushless motors that's on here. And it, uh, there's uh, four dampeners on the frame. It seems like it could actually withstand a, a, a decent cr crash because it's very flexible. You know, it's very flexible. And there's your little access uh, door right there. You pop that open, and that gives you access to your micro SD card and your cable where you can either do updates or maybe retrieve your files. I'm not sure yet because I haven't messed with it. Here's the uh, micro SD card. It goes in upside down, clicks in there. Here's your little battery release. And there's the locking mechanism right inside there. And then here's your little power button right here. So, yeah, looks good. On the front is your little crappy 720p camera. Still has the little cover on there. Maybe I better take that off before I forget. And on the bottom are your optical flow sensor and your two little positioning sonar. It has GPS also. Now let's get to the part, I think it's this box, of uh, the reason I actually bought this thing. And there it is. For the controller, for the transmitter. And it just folds out like this. This is how the antenna fold out. And when you pull the arms down here like this, it turns it on. Then there's your little Wi-Fi signal. And you slip the phone in by sliding it on here and pushing down on that like that. And that'll let you slide the phone in, which I'm not going to set the phone up right now. But uh, that's how you do it. It's not complicated stuff. Then to turn off the transmitter, you just close it. To charge the transmitter, you put the USB cord right into there. Charges it right up. There's the USB cord for doing that. It's right there, which I have 5 million of them, so I'm not even going to open that. Next, we have this awesome balance charger. Now, you can charge this battery, but you can also charge other makes of battery on this, if you wish. No, it's a complete battery charger, or a complete balance charger. It has for the, um, the I think this is a 14-something volt, the 11 volt, and the 7.4 uh, volt, and the 11.1. has all of them all on there. It's a pretty nice uh, charger, actually. It says right on there, compact, safe, and simple. EV Peak. Pretty nice, actually. I'm going to hold on to this thing. But the one that came with the uh, the Phantom One, that was a nice balance charger on that one too. So, so now I got two of them because I don't have one of those right nice real uh, nice hobby grade balance chargers. But I got two of them because I got this one and the one for the uh, Phantom One. So that's pretty cool. That's two boxes down, and then the last. I think there's two more. Let's get that out and this out. Oh, this is the battery. The battery is right here. It's a nice, healthy-looking battery, that's for sure. And it's not swollen or anything like that, so it's a good one. It's an 1850. 
14.8 volt. Now, I think they claim like 18 minutes of flight time and all that, but you know how the flight time, that flight time stuff's exaggerated. And here's the connector to hook it up to the quadcopter, and it, it's labeled for you, so. But there's only one way you could fit it on anyway because it's got the curved JST connector. It's curved on one side and flat on the other, so. You can't put it on backwards, but they label it for you anyway. So that's the double idiot protection, okay? It just don't have the single moron proof. It's the double moron proof, which would be me, okay? Then you just click it in there. Now, I saw a couple of videos where the person was able to pull it right back off of there. Um, I think it might have been Andy, where he was able to just pull it right back off of there, but I... Mine's not doing that. You'll have to do the lock to make that work, to make that happen, to get that off of there. You'll have to hit the lock release because mine snaps in there good, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't pull out. And here's the bag of props. They give you two spares. See, we're going to take it up here in the house for just a second. I'm not going to set up the app or anything today because I really don't feel like it because I'm not going to go outside. It's windy and cold and snowing and ugh, it's terrible here. So I'm going to dig out a couple packs of props. So you got your clockwise and your counterclockwise and you have to look on here Okay, I think this one is the counter, which would be this one here with the white one. So you just put them on here and push them on. You just have to find the right spot there. And you just push down on them, and they snap right in. You just have to find the right spot for them to push down. You hear them click it in there? That's what they do. Click in. That, and that's it. And then to release them, you just press in on this little plunger right here, and it they just pop right off. That's pretty neat, actually. Yeah, I like it. Now let's just hope they don't pop off when you're flying. Okay, that's the, that's the important part. Okay, I think that's all that's in the box, actually, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's it. That's all that's in there. So it's not that big of a deal. There's not a lot to it. And then the app, you just go to the app store, or you can scan the QR code. It's just called Wingsland M5. And it just it's the same app, actually, as the Wingsland S6 app. It runs exactly the same. There's no difference in it. So, yeah, that thing looks nice, man. It's, it, it has a nice feel to it, man. It feels solid, this little jigsaw. But, so, even though I didn't do any calibrating or any of that other crap, let's just take it up here in the house for a minute. I like to live on the edge, okay? <laughs> we'll do something stupid. Okay, it fired up. Oh yeah, it does that nice little thing like the Mavic Pro does. It's a little on the twitchy side. I don't see the land button working at all. I mean, the thing's never been calibrated or anything, so.
I don't hear no beats coming out of the transmitter. So. Boy, it's got some powerful sounding motors, I can tell you that. Those motors sound like they got a lot of power. I didn't look up the specs on them, but you can tell by this noise that they make that uh, they're pretty healthy. They're not warm at all either. All right, guys. I have to get this thing all configured and set the compass and calibrate it and do all that mumbo-jumbo. But as it is, right out of the box, it'll fly without no using no app. So I might do one of those... Uh, fly without the app flights just to see how what kind of range or what kind of distance they'll let you fly it without using the app some of them will let you go far and some of them won't so we'll see all right guys there you go have a nice day